Hi YouTube, it's uh, Dave from Horizon Fishkeeping. Today we'll be doing a project on the uh, DIY CO2 injection system for my planted aquarium. Um, so basically we're just going to do a run through and all the parts you need um, and what things you need to uh, create this uh, DIY system for the CO2 injection. Um, so the next part of this video we'll run through what, what we need to do and all the mixtures etc. Uh, this is part A of a two part series. So um, basically we'll do the build project and after the build project um, we'll do part B which is installing the system to the aquarium um, and then a, a later update on um, how we've got on sort of a month later with the plant growth. The aim of this game is to um, we're trying to cap it out the aquarium with uh, dwarf hair grass uh, we do have other plants in there as well um, you know we're running um, palace and area we've got some crypts in there and uh, some Amazon sods, so we're just going to see how we get on with the uh, CO2 system, um, and I'll sort of give it maybe a bit of a review at the end of the month um, to see um, how how good the DIY systems are, um, and then uh, you know you can make up your own mind if you'd like to do this. Anyway, guys, we'll move on to the next part of the video, um, and that'll be the construction of the DIY uh, CO2 injection system. Guys, this is the kit that I got off of uh, Amazon. Um, basically, it com comprises of um, a pressure gauge. It's got a small needle valve just on this side, um, and then this is the bubble counter. I have used this before, but it's just I've used this opportunity to make a video today, uh, so that you'd fill the water to halfway. Um, I don't have all the materials at the moment. Um, I'm just waiting for another bottle. Um, but this is basically what you'll be making. So each one of these. Um, there's a citric acid side A and baking soda part B. Um, so basically you put inside your mixture, which will flash up on the screen at some point during the video, the exact measurements you need uh, for the baking soda and citric acid, and that's just mixed with water. And you make like a solution in each, um, and then you squeeze the bottle A, which builds up the pressure inside the, uh, I'm, in this particular occasion, I'm using Coca-Cola bottle. Um, I will say don't use any sort of, um, like uh, diluted juice or all like that bottles you want to, you want to use a bottle that's had carbonated drinks in them because they are much stronger um, and they don't tend to have like um, a weld down the bottle some of the um, the diluted pops or the non carbonated drinks they can have like a weld on the bottle uh, with the pressure that's going to build up inside these bottles it, it will split apart you know it might not be the first time or the second time but it will split apart eventually so you're better using an already carbonated bottle because they're much stronger so in this particular case, the, um, you'd have two bottles connected to each side of the A and B um, screw taps there. Um, and then basically what you do is, so with the citric acid side, you would put 200 grams of citric acid in uh, with 200 milliliters of water. Um, you just sort of shake it around, dissolve that in the water a little bit. Then you just put the weighted end inside the bottle. And then that slides down to the bottom there and then you just screw the end on just like that um, and you'll end up with something like this with, obviously with another bottle with this side in with the baking soda um, so basically what happens is when when the mixtures are inside um, you close off all the taps uh, put some a little bit of water inside the bubble counter there and when you when you compress bottle A it pumps some of the citric acid solution up the pipe there goes across the bar and then drops down into the baking soda and what happens is it causes a chemical reaction which creates the CO2. Both bottles will pressurize um, and then the uh, CO2 gas will then rise up this side into your bu bubble counter where this controlled by your needle valve will start to um, do a bubble per, per second there. Um, so as you control this then you just sort of count your bubbles. There's not really a number um, for how many bubbles per minute, it depends on your tank size, how much pressure this creates. Um, obviously you've got a bit of a gauge there but it's a bit of a guessing game I'd go real slow at the beginning because uh, you can gash your fish out uh, what I usually do is um, I bought this actually I bought this separately um, actually I'll just talk about the um, the stuff that I use I use uh, sort of this baking soda it comes in a kilo jar I get it off Amazon it's quite cheap um, so that's the brand that I use in, in my particular reactor for the baking soda and then also, um, I've just bought this one, but any citric acid, as long as it doesn't have any sort of additives in or anything like that, you know, 
uh, sort of smells or any scent, scented stuff or all like that. This one's just from Wilkinson's, which is a small sort of chain store in the UK. Um, and this is the uh, citric acid that I use. It's their own brand. Um, they come in 250 gram packets. These are like £1.70, probably about two and a half dollars or whatever, um, equivalent in American money. Um, so basically each mix is usually 200 grams. Um, I use some small sort of uh, baking scales just to measure that out. Um, and I would advise as well that you get one of these because um, it makes it much easier when you're trying to mix the um, the powders and things into the bottle. Obviously, it's quite difficult to get something that's you know free free falling into a bottle this sort of size. So I just use the um, the funnel there, just pour the powder in, it just drops straight in the bottle. You just put the powder in first, then the water, and just sort of give it a bit of a shake around, and, and that makes it a lot easier to get inside. Um, so yeah, that's the brands that I use there. Um, you can use any citric acid or baking powder, uh, baking soda. It, it doesn't really matter which ones, um, as long as it's them two and the, and the measurements are correct. Um, then on top of that, I use um, which is an aftermarket thing as well. Some kits do come with these. Uh, it's basically a, an on-off solenoid, and then I connect this. Um, it's on a European plug, so it's got an adapter. Some of them come with the UK plugs. Uh, if you're in sort of America or Europe, you're all right. Um, but yeah, I just use that, connect that to there. And basically what this does is it's an automatic shut off. So when the power's on, it opens the valve. When it's off, it closes the valve. Um, and this would connect then to your um, bubble counter at the top there. So that can be constantly pressurized and, and nothing will go into the tank. Uh, that screws on there like that. So you can imagine your bottles will be on that, that sort of side. And then this is your on off valve and then you'll have a line off this one that goes into your tank and then comes down the line there to the diffuser. What I, what I do with this is um, I have this connected to a TAPO system which is like a Wi-Fi plug um, and I have it, it comes on um, an hour before my lights and then goes off an hour before my lights are due to turn off on an evening. Um, and that just gives it a bit of a run up because it does take a little while for the pressure to get up the line, pressurize the line and start pumping into the, the tank. And it does take a bit of wind down time as well. So uh, once the um, the solenoid turns off, you've still got quite a lot of um, CO2 in the line and it'll just keep pumping through until it's um, pressure's low enough to stop coming through the diffuser there. Uh, so if you put it on an hour before the lights and then an hour before the lights turn off, um, that gives you that'll give you a CO2 then throughout the day while the lights are on for um, proper CO, you know, for the um, the tank to get enough CO2 throughout the day. Then just go real steady with it because you can gas the fish out, and I, I did nearly do it myself. Um, I saw if you see the fish gasping at the top or like that, you're probably pumping too much, way too much CO2 in. I do have air stones running. I'd recommend air stones. I'm with Corey off Aquarium Corp on this. Um, it's just better to have them. It will it will um, gas off some of the you CO2 that you're pumping in, but with it being such a cheap way of doing it, it didn't really bother me so much. If you're paying for big bottles of CO2 and things like that, I can see why you wouldn't want to lose, um, you know, money that doing that because you are gassing some of it off, um, pumping oxygen into the tank. Another way of doing it is sort of having your oxygen pumping quite low during the day uh, when you when the uh, plants are, um, are creating the oxygen. And then you know have the the air stones going on at night time when your CO2 is off. That's quite a good way of doing it. Um, so this is the end of well, part one of this video. Uh, if you can chuck us a like down, guys, subscribe that'd be great. Um, obviously, you know it's a, quite a new channel. I do have Instagram as well. It's Horizon um, Fishkeeping, and I do have um, a page on Facebook as well. It's Horizon Fishkeeping. If you want to have a look at that, I've got loads of setups of breed fish. Um, about the calico, plecos, and all that kind of thing. This is just a, a tank in the living room at the moment. I've got some reading tanks in the bedroom. Um, I've got a big cichlid tank as well. If you want to go check them out on my Instagram, like on there, follow us. You know, I make videos daily on there. Um, and I'm just trying to um, start up this YouTube channel as well, so that'd be great. This is part one anyway. Part two will be me making the mixture for the CO2 system um, and then connecting it to the, the tank itself. So if you'd like to follow part B as well, if just chuck us a subscribe and follow, click the bell if you want, and then we'll move on to that. Right guys, thanks a lot. Bye.